I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong. In this video, I'll be discussing why and when a continuous glucose monitor, also known as a CGM, is worth it. I've lived with type 1 diabetes since 1997, and I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for the last about nine years of my life with diabetes. I started out wearing a Medtronic Enlight CGM, and now I wear a Dexcom CGM. So for me, wearing a CGM has been life-changing. And in this video, I'll tell you a little bit about why. However, I do think there are situations where a CGM is not ideal. So let's also talk about that. But first, let's go over what a CGM is. There are different brands of CGMs available, and unless you're paying cash, your insurance company will probably have a final say in which one you end up with. The CGMs that you can currently get if you're in the US are the Freestyle Libre CGM, there's the Medtronic CGM, there's Eversense, and then there's a the Dexcom CGM. They all work in pretty much the same way, You'll wear a small device on your body and it will then send your blood sugar readings directly to either a receiver or your phone. The Eversense CGM is the only implantable CGM that you need to have inserted by a medical professional every six months. The other CGMs you insert, you replace them by yourself at home. They all measure your blood sugar in the fluid underneath your skin, so not directly in the bloodstream. That does mean that there's a bit of a lag in the readings. So it's about 10 minutes behind your actual blood sugar value. They all also have startup periods. They do fail sometimes and they can be inaccurate on occasions. So you do need to still own a glucose meter so that you can still do finger sticks, but only when needed. But I'm overall really happy with my CDM. I wouldn't be without it. This leads me to the first reason why I think you should consider a CDM if you live with any type of diabetes. A CGM gives me insights into what's going on with my blood sugars that finger sticks will never be able to do. It gives me a broad picture, not just a snapshot as you get with finger sticks, but it lets me know where my blood sugars have been, yes, where they are, but also where they're going. Not to mention, it gives me insights into how my blood sugars are behaving in situations where I can't necessarily do a finger stick, such as when I'm driving, when I'm exercising, or when I'm sleeping. The level of information allows me to be way more proactive in my care than when I just use finger sticks. Because it shows me the trends, I can act before my blood sugar gets too high or too low. It also means that it becomes easier for me to spot trends so that I can make tweaks to my care. It also becomes easier for my doctor to get an overview of what's going on with my diabetes as I can share my reports directly with the clinic. To summarize, a CGM allows for a more comprehensive picture of your blood sugars than just snapshots that you get with finger sticks. So that means that it allows you to make proactive, fact-based decision-making when it comes to your diabetes. I think most people who live with insulin-dependent diabetes can agree that low blood sugars are super uncomfortable, especially those where you're sweating, you're shaking, and you feel like you're about to die, meanwhile you're eating everything in sight. I found that having a CGM significantly reduces how many I have of those. The main reason my CGM reduces the amount of low blood sugars is the alarms. I set my blood sugar thresholds and the device will alert me when I hit those. So for example, during the night, I have my threshold set at 70 milligrams per deciliter. So instead of waking up with a low blood sugar, the device will wake me up, I can treat it with glucose and go back to bed. I don't have symptoms at 70 milligrams per deciliter, so that means fewer low blood sugar episodes where I'm sweating, I'm shaking, and eating everything in sight. The only reasons why I still have low blood sugars are that, well, first of all, the sensor has a startup period. So for the Dexcom G6, that's two hours. For some of the other sensors, it's longer. Some of them, it's shorter. And you don't get any blood sugar readings during the startup period. Also, the device can sometimes be inaccurate. Like anything, it's not accurate 100% of the time. And then there'll be periods where I decide to not put on a new sensor right when the old one expires. And of course, I won't get any blood sugar readings when I'm not wearing a sensor. Another strong upside to wearing a CGM is the peace of mind that it gives. For me, the alerts act as a safety net. The system's got my back, so if I'm sleeping or not paying attention, it will alert me if something is up. I think for a lot of people who live alone or for parents, who have children living with diabetes, it's a very powerful tool. You can share the glucose readings with others, so that means you're never truly alone when it comes to your diabetes. 
by sharing with others. Well, that means that let's say that you live alone and you go low during the night and you don't hear the alarms. Well, somebody else will be alerted and they'll be able to act. I do not have the share functionality turned on, but I can see the value in it. Another thing that the CGM does for me is that it gives me confidence in my diabetes management choices. It's really easy to see what works. And if I, for example, accidentally inject too much insulin for a meal, well, the system will alert me. That's a really peace of mind. And it's not all rainbows and butterflies. I know that the constant data flow and alarms can give some people anxiety, even lead to alarm fatigue and burnout. And that's something to keep in mind. I've seen some handle it by turning off all the alerts that they could turn off or only looking at the device when they need to make dosing decisions. I think this is a great strategy. I think you get a lot of functionalities of a CGM, but without the mental health burden. I know my perspective on CGMs is from a person who lived with insulin dependent diabetes, but I actually also think it's a great tool for people who do not live with insulin dependent diabetes. I've seen it be hugely impactful, even for folks who do not manage their blood sugars with insulin. It comes back to information and what you do with it. So even if you do not manage your blood sugars with insulin, you still need information about, well, how does certain types of food or certain portion sizes impact your blood sugars? And you still need information outside of those times where you do your finger sticks, for example, when you're sleeping or you're just not paying attention to your blood sugars. And there's really power in knowing how your blood sugars react to your favorite snacks or to a walk. It might incentivize you to change things up a little or maybe to do more of what you're already doing. But one thing is me sitting here telling you, hey, go for a walk that might lower your blood sugars and then in reality, see your blood sugars coming down during your walk. It's proof of concept. And I just found that it's a great incentive when people see something that has a positive impact on them. Not just in theory, but in reality. But a CGM is not for everyone. And there are different reasons for that. One of them could be the price, because especially if your insurance won't cover it, it can be really expensive. To that, I do want to add, I went 15 years of my life with diabetes without a CGM and I did well. So it can be done. It's just harder and it takes more effort. The price of a CGM varies quite a bit. It depends on your insurance, but also what brand that you choose. Based on my research, the Freestyle Libre is the cheapest CGM. It's an okay CGM. I prefer Dexcom. Why? That's a longer story. I made a whole video about that. I'll link to that up here. A Freestyle Libre 2 CGM is probably the cheapest cash option right now. Uh, one CGM is $55. That lasts you two weeks. That means it's $110 a month or $1,320 a year. And I know that's going to be too expensive for a lot of people. And if you're in a situation where you have to choose between a CGM or buying groceries or gas, it's probably not worth it. And again, you can achieve solid diabetes management with finger sticks, but you have to be extremely structured about it. You have to measure frequently, but you can do it. The final thing that I like to bring up in this video, and this is definitely a CGM con, that is that CGMs are not reliable 100% of the time, like any other tech. Some people seem to find their CGMs to be very inaccurate. I haven't had a lot of trouble for quite a while now, but I've had my fair share of inaccurate sensors, fail sensors, or transmitter failures. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. Can it be dangerous? Yes. Does this mean that I want to ditch my CGM? No, but it's something that's worth considering because if you do not think that this is something you'll be able to handle, maybe a CGM is not for you. When it comes to sensor or transmitter failures, those are always annoying. They're always inconvenient, but it falls under the product warranty. So that means you can get a replacement. Dexcom is really good at doing replacements. And I know that Libre does replacements as well. When it comes to inaccurate sensors, the way that I deal with it is first of all, I don't necessarily trust all the readings I see on my CGM and I do spot checks. So what I mean by not trusting my sensor that in general, I do trust my sensor, but if I see a reading that seems out of whack with how I feel, so let's say that my CGM is telling me I'm very high or very low and I feel fine, or it's telling me that I'm fine and I feel low, I'll do a finger stick to check. Okay. So I still, trust how I feel over what the device is telling me. 
And for spot checks, that simply means that I do finger sticks sporadically throughout the sensor lifetime, more during the first 24 hours, as this is when the sensor is calibrating to the body and sensors do tend to be a little more inaccurate those first 24 hours. But most of my sensors work fine and I don't have any issues. And those were the six things that I think you should take into consideration if you're debating whether or not a CGM is for you. Let me know down in the comments if you have anything to add to my list or if you have any questions about wearing a CGM. Also, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content, if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell that way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching.